Welcome back to another issue of Eagles Bingo Topics. I'm your humble host, and we're going to get to a myriad of things connected with the Philadelphia Eagles today. First off, with the Hassan Reddick saga, all the way to staffers getting let go because of their apparent issues with holding players accountable, and more. What's up? It's your boy Centron. Come back at you with another analysis with the kid you not. That's my real name. Random Eagles notes. Hassan Reddick, trade aftermath, and staffer changes. So it's in Eagles fans' best interest that Hassan Reddick shows up and has a productive year with the Jets because of the conditions of this off-season trade. In my favorite love-to-hate relationship with Jimmy Kempiski, I call him that unaffectionately. He doesn't know who I am, but I know who he is. So let's let the one-sided relationship continue. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into it. Um, former Eagles edge rusher Hassan Reddick skipped Jets mandatory minicamp. You know where he is. He's here in Japan. He's wilding out. But anyways, um, while we may want to stick it to the man or the fan of the Jets and say, ah, you got our problems now, you got our issues, let's not make too much of that because we are directly tied to this trade. It's a conditional one. But that third rounder that you traded can become a second rounder if he meets the uh, capitulations that we uh, st stipulated. So um, if he gets... 10 plus sacks and plays, I think, 67% of those snaps. We get that uh, third rounder to move up to be a second rounder. So we want him to kind of uh, play um, play nice. Okay, 67 and a half. But anyways, who's counting? And that's in 2026. It's nowhere near. It's in two years. But um, that'll, that'll lock it in for this uh, that upcoming um, year draft. I mean... I, I was sad to see him go, but, you know, the production was still there. But seeing what he's making them go through this summer, not being there, and after having reneged on, you know, apparently uh, agreeing to the offseason stuff, it's kind of good to have a headache out the way, out the window, and dealing with a younger pass rusher in Bryce Huff, a guy who's humble, who's um, all grind, and may not be, you know, as proven as Hassan Reddick, but, hey, you had to shed some pounds by way of, you know, um, contract. He was, he's owed $14 million this year. And, you know, we're paying Bryce Huff $17 million, which is a bargain, a steal um, in this day and age. Albeit he's been a rotational pass rusher up until now. But that being said, I mean, uh, the projection for him is, is definitely onwards and upwards because he's only 25 years old. We got him for the next three years, you know, still going to be 29 years old or 28 years old when his contract ends. And we're going to be looking to re-up, redo that, and push probably into, most likely into the 20 million. And who knows what the salary cap would look like then. But Hassan um, was apparently good with it. And Jets thought that he, you know, he thought that they, he would be good on it. But they knew he wanted more money. So both sides are kind of playing chicken here. And it kind of, you know, it's going the wrong route. And his, he's not on a working contract. So his fines are unforgivable. You know, not that they're, you know lace with any mouse or anything like that but if he's on a rookie contract like Brandon Ayuk for, um, per se he can you know have that money um, taken away as far as the penalty part of it it's not going to be contingent on him um, showing up and then um, you know them being able to do another lace that into the deal kind of so and he signs off on it already he's going to want them to you know negate that money that he lost because he's not going to want to give up you know 14 million that's why I don't see this you know, protracting out in, into, you know, training camp when the fines really get hefty, they can really start coming after your running, your salary. So um, it's unfortunate that things turn out the way they did because I would love to have him here for, you know, the, the last year of his deal. Let's get maybe a conditional pick moving forward, but um, I'm sorry, um, a um, supplementary pick, what do you call those? The uh, picks you get for players leaving and then the league awards you them, comp compensatory. But I mean, it just, it just was going to be untenable because Bryce Huff, once he signed a contract, it was done so. And he was never going to play for, you know, less than the new guy is going to get. You know, just a sticky situation, even though it would have been great to have him, Sweat, and um, and Bryce Huff in a rotation, being your you know, top three guys. Eh, could, you know, should should have, could have, would have, what could have been. But, you know, I wasn't up to a man in that contract because he knew that Hassan wanted real money. Anyways, let's get into another issue. VP of player performance, Ted Rath is out and Big Dom is now part of the coaching staff. So they did that to kind of, you know, negate that um, that snafu with the 49ers and Dre Greenlaw, you know, the finger in the face being an issue moving forward, him getting kicked out and not being able to uh, be there to manage Nick Sirianni. 
uh, yeah, sick Nirian. <laughs> um, moving forward, um, that's, that's the reason why we lost the four names game, right? Um, and you know, I, I get it. You know, he's a big personality. He's you know a galling presence. You know, the players love him. He brings a lot of uh, moxie, gusto, and security. You know, per his job, there for the Eagles on the sideline. But really, what I want to talk about is. Uh, Ted Rath, he was always helping guys up, you know, on the sideline, patting them on the back, back but both balls. Um, but he's been let go because Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter did wear down down the stretch. And you have to call into question their conditioning. And who was that on? Apparently him. So um, it, it's sad to, to hear that because I, I loved him, you know, the good energy he brought. But if he wasn't holding up his end of the deal, you know, you got to cut ties and let bygones be bygones. And, you know, he's a guy that, you know, like I said, I liked, you know, he, he was always supportive of the players and he looked like, you know, he's squarely in the corner ready to go, you know, to run through a brick wall for them, you know, go to uh, war for them. But, you know, if he wasn't, he was failing in his other areas of responsibility, then, you know, we got to cut ties. But um, hopefully he lands on his feet. You know, it, it, it was, I think, a little bit overblown as far as like, oh, it's just because of Jordan Davis. I'm sure it's not that singular issue, but that is a big issue because it's been, you know, a concurrent thing two years in a row and this is his third year can he get it right because his his his, uh, his uh, georgia um, bulldog mate is uh on a pretty damn good trajectory you know out of the gate this year he could ascend to potential pro bowl or you know um not i won't say god forbid not god forbid god allow it um please allowance let those blessings rain in rain in all pro um status we'll see all right, um, the Eagles have a robust 2025 draft capital. So let's look at it. We um, were able to, you know, swing these trades, you know, trading down. We traded down for, I think, the fourth, uh, the third round pick to fourth. And then fourth, you know, one, you know 127 to another pick. We're able to parlay those picks into um, other ones from, you know, other franchises. We keep fleecing the Dolphins, the Lions, um, the, ta the, the, the Titans. You know, we, we maybe traded with them again um, last year. I mean, yeah, yeah, last year with um, Kevin Byard, they got, you know, the better end of that deal. But, you know, it being what it was last year, we thought that we had a you know, steal. Um, but we have an extra three, um, a four that wasn't ours. So we replaced our own four, um, an extra five. And I think those either might be, they might be ours, but the way they're, they're, they're saying it, you know, I don't know if they are or not, but just excellent, you know, um, I don't think we're gonna get any compensatory picks because you know the guys we brought in in, in free agency, but you know that's good trade bait. You know definitely at the trade deadline we might want to make a move or two, go receiver, um, some position that we need because of injury, safety, um, just for depth purposes, a edge rusher that you know we you know want to add to the uh, the the stockpile if other guys don't pan out. So who knows you know, who knows where we we'll go with that? But you know we're gonna get up out of here on that note. But shorter video. It's all good, though, because you're not even watching, but it's all good because I keep repeating myself um, because I love talking about my team, Philadelphia Eagles. Been with them since 01, but hey, you don't know that because you're not here. But I love, you know, discussing them, love making videos about them. So we'll chunk this is officially, but as always, as always, it's Fly Eagles Fly and let's motherfucking go. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life, or Centron Laughs, or other social media.